I want to read some of the 20 bullet points that uh, Charlie Sheen would like to make to the president in person. Okay, so it says, thank you, Mr. President. Okay, first, on the FBI most wanted list, Osama bin Laden is not charged or listed with the crimes of 9-11. When I called the FBI to ask them why this was the case, they replied, there's not enough evidence to link bin Laden to the crime scene. I later discovered he had never even been indicted by the Department of Justice, though he was for, I would just add, for the Tanzania uh, bombings in Kenya, bombings in Kenya and Tanzania, and, of course, for the USS Cole. See, and, and we have links to the FBI zone admissions. Number two, FBI translator Sybil Edmonds was dismissed and gagged by the DOJ after she revealed the government had foreknowledge of the plans to attack American cities using planes as bombs as early as April 2001. Remember, Bush lied and said that wasn't the case, but later it came out. In August of 2009, Ms. Edmonds, Mrs. Edmonds broke the federal gag order and testified under oath that Osama bin Laden, al-Qaeda, and the Taliban were all working for and with the CIA up until the day of 9-11. Number three, the following is a quote from Mayor Giuliani during an interview on 911 with Peter Jennings for ABC News. I went down to the scene and we set up a headquarters at 75 Barclay Street. I'm quoting uh, Mayor Giuliani. Quote, I went down to the scene and we set up headquarters at 75 Barclay Street, which was right there with the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, the head of emergency management. And we were operating out of there when we were told that the World Trade Center was going to collapse, and it did collapse before we could actually get out of the building. So we were trapped in the building for 10 or 15 minutes and finally found an exit and got out and walked north and took a lot of people with us. Who told him this? Charlie Sheen says, to this day, the question remains unanswered, completely ignored and emphatically denied by Mayor Giuliani on several public occasions. Even though there's all these videos and audios of him on ABC News and CBS saying the exact same thing. <clears throat> so there you have it. Number four, Charlie Sheen. Number four, in April 2004, USA Today reported in the two years before September 11th, the North American Aero Defense Command conducted exercises simulating what the White House says was unimaginable at the time. Hijacked airliners used as weapons to crash into targets and cause mass casualties. One of the targets was the World Trade Center. Charlie Sheen, number five. On September 12, 2007, CNN's Anderson Cooper 360 reported that the mysterious white plane spotted in videotape by multiple media outlets flying in restricted airspace over the White House shortly before 10 a.m. on the morning of 9-11 was in fact the Air Force's E-4B, a specially modified Boeing 747 with a communications pod behind the cockpit, otherwise known as the Doomsday Plane. And there's links to all these reports to Giuliani, to CNN, to Anderson Cooper. Though fully aware of the event, the 9-11 Commission deemed the appearance of the military plane to not be of any interest and did not include it in the final 9-11 Commission report. By the way, it was over D.C. and New York. They got five of them. When all other planes are grounded. Number six, three F-16s assigned to Andrews Air Force Base, 10 miles from D.C., we're conducting training exercises in North Carolina, 207 miles away, as the first planes crashed into the World Trade Center. Even at significantly less than their top speeds of 1,500 miles per hour, they could still have defended the skies over Washington well before 9 a.m., more than 37 minutes before Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon. However, they did not return until after 9.55 a.m. Andrews Air Force Base had no armed fighters on alert and ready to take off on that morning of 9-11. Charlie Sheen, number seven. WTC 7, WTC Building 7. Watch the video of its collapse. We have a link to that and a whole page on that. Number 8, Flight 93 is the fourth plane to crash on 9-11 at 10.03 a.m. Vice President Cheney only gives shoot-down orders at 10, 10 to 10.20 a.m. And this is not communicated to NORAD until 28 minutes after Flight 93 crashes. Further fueling suspicion on this front is the fact that three months before the 9-11 attacks, Dick Cheney usurped control of NORAD, and therefore he and no one else on planet Earth had the power to call for military sorties on the hijacked airliners on 9-11. He did not exercise that power three months after 9-11. He relinquished command of NORAD and returned it to military operation. And then uh, we have uh, links to that. Hold on one second. got to take this phone call. Hey, my friend, I'm on the air. 
hey. No, 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 no. We're talking. Hey, I'll I tell you what, guys. I'm going to talk to Charlie. I know this is an important call. Uh, go to uh, the uh, older interview for just a minute or two, okay? I'll be right back, folks. And Charlie, there's so many facets to 9-11, but what about WTC-7? Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't even hit by a building. 47-story structure has two small fires in it. Uh, a modern steel building that never collapsed from fire. Uh, the Madrid fire last year, it, it burned for two days with 150-something-foot you know, white-hot flames, and nothing collapsed there. What happened with Building 7, in your opinion? Well, curious, isn't it? It's a little bit curious. Um, <laughs> it just seems odd that an event... Um, uh, something that we all witnessed because um, September 11th wasn't the Zapruder film it was the Zapruder film festival okay and I think that, that um, what was the great uh, uh, Hoover quote about the bigger the lie the easier it is to pass over on people yes I'm, I'm, I, I mangled it I'm paraphrasing well no Hitler but, had a similar one about the bigger the lie the more they'll buy it sure there you go there you go. Um, let me just throw out a quote, just because, you know, we're 20 minutes into this, and I'm sure I'm being demonized across the nation by, you know, all of the uh, <laughs> people that do that sort of thing. Um, but people see through the propaganda organs now like they never have before. Well, good. Good. Finally. Um, there's a couple of quotes here. Um, the first is, it is unpatriotic not to tell the truth, whether about the president or anyone else. The second quote from the same gentleman is uh, that we are to stand by the president, right or wrong, is not only unpatriotic and servile, but is morally treasonable to the American public. Theodore Roosevelt. Yes, well, I mean, that's what the founding fathers said. It's our job to be watchdogs. The Declaration of Independence clearly states that in our seminal founding document. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and we've been uh, coerced um, away from these founding principles. We've been uh, told you're either with us or you're with the terrorist, and, and we've been told never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning 9-11. Bush said yeah. that at the U.N. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That would um, that would direct the blame away from those responsible, blah, blah, blah. Um, back to Building 7, yeah. it. Um, you pointed out in one of your documentaries that in a classic... Um, Controlled demolition that they they um, they create what's first called a crease. Is that correct or a, or a wrinkle? Uh, crease, wrinkle, crimp. Uh, all those are used. Yes, they blow the central column. Right, and the term um, pull is about pulling the outer walls toward the center of the building. Correct. Yes. Um, so you minimize the damage, and that way you bring a building down on its own footprint. Uh, and, and and many controlled demolition experts said they've never seen a prettier job than Building Seven. Yeah, gosh. And there was a there was a guy I can't remember his name, but scientifically he broke down that the building actually fell faster than the speed of gravity because of the explosive uh, vacuum that was created. Well, a lot of uh, different uh, physicists, uh, uh, physics professor at, at BYU, Stephen Jones has done that. Uh, underwriting Laboratories, uh, Kevin Ryan, who was there. That guy, got, that guy got fired, right? Yes, he said we did our own test, and it's impossible. Steel doesn't melt until thousands of degrees. Uh, around 3,000 it weakens, and jet fuel burns at 1,200 to 1,400. It's impossible. Well, that's that's 1,200 at, at, at optimum conditions, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then you've got uh, Silverstein, the leaseholder, the owner of, 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 of Seven as well as the rest of the complex, right? On tape, on the record, saying, uh, we've had such a terrible loss of life that day, and uh, I made the decision that they should uh, go ahead and pull it. And we gave the order and watched the building come down. Yeah. Um, the pull is the, I mean, that's his... That's as common to the demo world as action and cut to the movie world. Uh, here is Larry Silverstein, the owner who took out $7 billion of insurance on the two towers. And uh, he's also now bought the Sears Tower and taken out a bunch of insurance. And uh, Governor Pataki just uh, uh, called him uh, the lowest of the low in the newspaper because he's holding out for a billion more now. Interesting fellow. Um, made out quite well. And uh, here is his statement from America Rebuilds. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. I said, you know, we've had such a terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull it. And then we watched the building collapse.
Yes. They made the decision to pull. They made. They made the decision. And this building with two small fires implodes perfectly, and then there's video from every angle of the squibs or the blast points where the plastic explosives are detonating, and you see the ejection ports. You see the blast points, just like when you watch a Las Vegas demolition. They just had a demolition over the weekend in Fort Worth. We have video and photos of that up on InfoWars.com. Fell just like seven. The blast, the squibs. Uh, then the crimp in the middle, the top of the building imploding downwards, and then it falls in on itself. Uh, going back to uh, our guest, Mr. Sheen, uh, that is the clip you okay. mentioned with Mr. Silverstein. Okay, that's the interview from three years ago. We've heard a clip of an interview we're going to be airing in full tomorrow and Charlie Sheen live coming up several times this week and a video interview.